for that. Now then, it's nearly time to say bonjour <laughs> to our next guest, who's been an icon of British television for over 50 years. From only fools and horses to open all hours and a touch of frost, David Jason has an extraordinary career. So before we uh, speak to the man himself, let's have a reminder of some of those iconic roles. If you think I'm attractive, you Well, they're looking for someone to work at 20,000 bucks. This is Detective Inspector Frost. Don't be so This time next year, we will be millionaires. Because I'm a bit of a culture vulture myself. He's a man, don't you? Farmer. Farmer. Oh dear, victimization. I am sorry. I'll get you a complaint. I suppose you think that's funny. And we're on a winner here, three. All right. Play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool. You know what I mean? Oh, it's the greatest. Sir David Jason joins us now. And good morning to you. It's great to see you this morning. Good morning, good morning, Holly and Philip. Lovely to be here with you. It's uh, always a pleasure. Um, we'll, we'll come to the book in, a, book in a moment, but I think um, we just wanted to start by just saying how, from everyone here how sorry we are to hear the news over the weekend that your, your co-star and, more importantly, your friend, John Chalice, passed away over the weekend. So that must have been extremely sad news for you to receive. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a complete surprise because... Uh, poor old John had been uh, hadn't been well for uh, the last month or two, but uh, it seemed he went downhill so fast, very rapidly that one minute we were, you know, thinking he was on the road to recovery, and sadly, uh, it just uh, took him quite swiftly. So yeah, we're still suffering a bit of shock, I'm afraid. Yeah, sure. and and also um, he was uh, it's you always get the measure of a man when you look at the tributes and people saying how wonderful he was, how kind yeah. he was. Um, and, a, and a lover of nature, lover of, loved his garden. Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I always measure an actor by is uh, the difference between how they are in real life and the parts that they play. So it comes as a bit of a surprise sometimes to people that John Jarvis was such a kind and such an ordinary, lovable sort of chap, uh, totally different to the character Boise that he played. Yeah. And people, a lot of people tend to think that that was John, but it wasn't. That was him and just showed the skill that he had as an actor to portray Boise the way that he did, because it was totally against his, his natural nature. Well, as we said to begin with, we're so sorry for, for the loss that you've had there. But I guess he was one of those people that came into your life, like many people you've met throughout your time, whether it, whether it be sort of personally or working, or the characters you've played that have given you those life lessons. And these life lessons that you've written here in your book, uh, this is a, a del of a life, lessons that I've learned. Um, and I just wondered, you know, what did the characters teach you? Because you say you learned as much from them as you did from other areas of your life. Yeah, I, I think that you you <laughs> you always do learn something from the characters that you play. That you play. Strangely enough, um, when you think that the, uh, the the difference between myself and the character like Granville that I played, there's also a uh, character um, Frost that I played. What I, what you learn from them is one on one side you'd say, Frost, what did you learn from Frost? Well, to be um, authority, to be, to be strong when it's needed. And then on the other side, that Granville was a character was, was, <laughs> was an innocent, and uh, he was gentle. And so there's a sort of total dichotomy there, but you learn a little bit from each. The, niceness about people underlying both characters, I think. And also the people that you work with, because you say that Ronnie Barker was uh, was a great teacher um, in the importance of teamwork. Ah, I'm glad you mentioned that, because um, you, you probably are aware of it as much as anybody else, and uh, 
meaning that we, the audience who watch you and uh, you and Holly, when you when you work, when you perform, we we don't realise the team that you've got behind you to present your show and how important they all are. And myself and Ronnie included, because Ronnie was the one that taught me the need to rely so uh, heavily on your team. And if you are the leading man in a, um, a series like Frost or uh, 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 um, The Fools and Horses, you, you come to respect your fellow players and everybody in the team. And that includes the floor managers, the runners, makeup, wardrobe, all of those people are part of the team and you need those with you. And uh, that is a, um, a very important lesson that I learned from Ronnie B because when I worked with Ronnie B, he was a big star and I was, you know, just an ordinary jobbing actor. But uh, I just loved the way that he had humility as well, as well as encompassing all his team. Because he told me that that was he couldn't he couldn't do it what he did without his team and yeah I've uh, I've learned that that's a life lesson that I think we could all uh, take yeah, a little note I, of occasionally no names no back drill <laughs> you say there that he was he was a big star at that time and you were a jobbing actor but you clearly went on to become a national treasure and a big star and part of that was was only fools and horses and the magic that that gave but that level of fame was something i can't imagine you were prepared for no you're absolutely right but one thing that i would say and this is this is uh, quite important for people who are on the way up and i often think about this about young um, singers and uh, musicians that have a big, big success when they're in their, you know, early teens or, or in their early 20s, how to handle the, the, the dangerous lady called success. Because I was fortunate that I grew up in the theatre and I spent my time learning my trade and I just loved it. And uh, because I loved it with a passion, I was went all over the, this country and I went all over abroad long before that I uh, found success in television. To me, success was working and especially in the theater. So I had a good grounding so that when this big mistress called success happened to me, I, I, I was able to take her with a, pinch of salt and uh, not take her too seriously. So I've been very fortunate in that regard. And, um, and, and we didn't get a chance when you were, because this is in, in, out in the paperback, uh, you were in talking to us when the hardback came out originally, we didn't get one thing I wanted to mention to you, was the, uh, was the helicopter. Are you still flying? Oh yeah, yeah. Funny enough, I've just, uh, I've just completed my, uh, obligatory hours to get my uh, to, to ensure my license is still valid so yes I'm still flying the skies flying around the countryside I love it so it's a it's a, a wonderful uh, relief from uh, the day-to-day -day chores I'll of bet. life yeah I'll bet um, it's, it's lovely it's so lovely to see always. you I wish you were in here next time come in and see us please uh, now that's a promise that you've got to keep. We this time next welcome. year, we'll be in the studio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, this is uh, this is what we're talking about. Uh, this is uh, this is David's book. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank indeed. you. Always lovely. Take care. Thank you. Right.